Congratulations on getting to this point of y'all career, man. People yeah, don't make so I appreciate it. That. People don't I appreciate make it, man. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's a lot of gems filled. A lot of guys in Philadelphia, man, is bitter because they haven't made it for, for whatever reasons. You know, you're right. Everybody don't make it, man. It's a, this is a hard game, and it's not always about who's the best. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's timing. A lot of times it's your situation. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's your business model, the people that you got around you. A lot of things goes that go into succeeding in boxing. It's mm-hmm. a lot deeper than people would ever know, man. Mm-hmm. Everybody think that, you know, because I said that we fight on Spence. I love Earl Spence, man. That's my dude. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't talk about betting on fights all the time. Uh-huh. I watch people from afar like you. Uh-huh. Man, let me tell you something. Bro got a good structure. This pop don't play that crap. Hey, hey, you know hey, let me saying? tell you what his dad did to me so he can tell you a story. I'm in the gym. I'm in the gym. I'm in the gym last week. He said, uh, "Did you ask me? Can you use the camp?" I said, "Oh no, my bad. We eat." <laughs> because yeah, you know, Earl's gonna be out of boxing, and Earl's gonna have. I don't know none of his personal business. I don't know nothing that goes on with with how much money he comes home with or none of that stuff. But I know people and I know life. And I'm telling you, his pop got their thing under control. I've been around them. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it, 1,000%. I think the world of Earl, and I think the world of they struck. Mm-hmm. Earl's a smart kid. He's going to have a lot of money outside of boxing, man. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's a very smart kid. And his pop got a real, like, um, mentor guiding mm-hmm. Influence over him. Well, some guys have fathers with him, mm-hmm. but they don't have fathers that can tell him anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and well, you can see it in Earl too. Father got that. Yes. Yeah, you can see yeah, it in Earl because that was my first time actually spending time with his father. Naturally, I've been around him, but I've never spent any time. And I was like, I swear to God, I don't kiss fighters' ass for nothing. But I said in my head, I said, I see where Earl gets this from. I see it with my own eyes. I fucking I, I, see it. I've been around him. I've been around him, and I'm like, man, you know what? That dude pop ain't gonna let him mess up. Nope, nope, and, and, not and one I, bit. And I, look, and I don't look and tell this pop don't need nothing from him. Nope, and nope. The reason, I, the reason how I don't look and tell is because this pop had it together my whole first time pro, mm-hmm. and don't nobody really had no money when they first time pro. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this pop didn't need nothing from him, but I could tell that he had that big bottom where his business was going to be cool. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these kids, they think they know Fred, but they don't know. Mm-hmm. They think they know. They mm-hmm. think they know everything. They think that their money is good, but they really don't be on. Yeah. But Earl's shit is tight, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It really is. I got a lot of flack for supposedly calling them out, man, but I was just... No, he ain't getting no slack. I, I was playing matchmaker like everybody else was Hey, listen. They want that money. That's why you're going to get a lot of slack. Listen, I would die for two black fighters on Juneteenth. You already know my mission. Man, I would die for, not die, but I would, man, God damn. I think it would be awesome. It, would be, it would be amazing. It would be amazing. talking about Terrence. Well, guess what? I don't work with Terrence Crawford so long. Yeah. The guy I work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Well, and, and, and if Manny Pacquiao don't want the fight and Terrence Crawford, I mean, and, and, and they can't make the Terrence Crawford fight, why not? Earl said he's going to be better. He told me in the interview, or, or, or the camera was off, I will be better at 154. Than 147. I believe that. Earl was all that at 152 in the amateurs. Yeah. I believe that. Mm-hmm. That ain't no thing of working on mm-hmm. or taking on a little guy. Earl and Julian fought in 2009 in the amateurs. Oh, how'd that go? How'd that go? Oh, 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 what? Uh huh. It was a great fight. Some yeah. people over on the East Coast say that, you know, they gave, they, you know how USA boxing is. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that. Earl won. His dad got the tape. They want to release it. Let him release it. Mm. And it will switch itself. Wow. It was a great fight. Julian thinks he won. Earl won the fight. And if you think, and, and, and Earl got the official result, I heard it. It, it, it was a great fight. Mm-hmm. Gonna leave it at that. What makes Earl special? A lot of things. Earl is fundamentally sound. He keeps his feet up under him. He stays in punching position. You know, those are things. People forget about the basics, man. If you watch Earl fight, I don't think Earl is an overwhelming athlete. Sometimes mm-hmm. they kind of um, compare him to Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard's a better natural athlete than Earl is. Ray Leonard's faster. Mm-hmm. He got different kind of twitch pop. Twitchy, I think. Got. There we go. Yep. He got, he got a different kind of twitch pop. I see that you do. You in the athletics, so you know it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, 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 I don't know what I saw. I think you, I saw your kids or something on social media. Mm-hmm. So if you're watching your kids play sports, you know the little kid that's yeah. like, oh, that kid could be a D1 athlete. Yeah. And then you know the little kid that's out there just playing yes. just for fun. Yes. Oh, to me, is not an overwhelming athlete. I don't look at him like a Roy Jones 
Ray Leonard kind of athlete, mm-hmm. but he's fundamentally sound. He keeps his feet up under him at all times. His elbows are in. He understands timing. He understands distance. He's he's he's, he's strong as fuck to be a forty seven pounder. Mm-hmm. He's not a one punch knockout artist, but he has those heavy hands and he's consistent mm-hmm. throughout a fight. Earl can fight. Mm-hmm. That Joker can fight, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I think Earl's one of the best ten fighters in the world. Earl can fight his butt off. Mm-hmm. He got amazing stamina. You know what I'm saying? Uh, defensively, he showed a lot better. He showed a lot more defensive improvement against Mikey Garcia because mm-hmm. Earl wasn't the hardest guy to hit it one time. Yeah, you know what I mean. You could put your hands on him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. He showed he showed some better defensive skills against Mikey. Earl can go. Mm-hmm. And then Julian, you know, they both obviously improved since two thousand nine. That's a great fight. Mm, that's you know a hell fight. I'll that's be front center on that. I'll be front line yeah. in that fight for that's sure. That's a great fight. I think Julian is a little. Earl's probably a little more consistent through, through, from 1 through 12, but I think Julian is a little bit quicker and a little bit more of a natural athlete as mm-hmm. far as getting off is concerned. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like his, twitch, his twitchiness is concerned. Mm-hmm. But that's a great fight. That's an even money fight. Yeah, it definitely is a 50 51 49 fight. Now, 50 yeah. 50, whatever you call it. Now, you know the irony of how you describe Earl is the same way I, I, was, I was speaking to Phil, Phil Greco this past weekend. And he said the same thing I said in different words. You said the same thing I said in different words. His base. Like, I didn't know his base was that great until I watched him last two weeks ago, two Saturdays ago in, in, in Dallas. I said, holy shit. How the fuck? How the, in my humble opinion, I, 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 I don't fight professionally, but I can't see a 147 pounder moving him off his base. I don't. Uh, who you talk? Because he. Who stays in punching position so much? Mm. It's really hard to get, to get Earl out of position. Yeah, Earl did something is likely that he should be praised for a lot more, but he's not. Let me show you what Earl did with Mike. Earl got a great coach. I think Derek James is awesome. He is awesome. He is characters. Like, he, characters like he, yours too. Yeah, he's a, he's. A, I think I think Derek is an awesome coach, man. Um, I know we would have a. A big fight on our hands, a really tough fight if, if that fight was to ever come to mm-hmm. fruition. I mean, it's a lot of time away. Mm-hmm. They both got to keep winning. Earl got to move up. You know what I mean? It's a mm-hmm. lot going on. But actually, I think Derek is awesome, man. Derek one of the trainers that would keep me up at night if I had to go against him. <laughs> but all they did was jab and took a half a step back. They just kept it simple. Uh-huh. Everybody, like, like that's, that's what he really did. He would stick a jab on, on, on Mikey. Mikey always needs to step in with his with his one two. Mm-hmm. Earl would take a half a step back and take the target away from him, and Michael would be lost every time. That's all he did over and over. Mm-hmm. I never even talked to Earl after the fight. I watched. I said, "Damn, he's just taking a jab and a half a step back, and Mikey can't figure it out." Mm. Wow. Jeez. That was a great game plan. The reason why is because some of these guys get all exotic with all this fucking fancy pad work and they doing all this shit, and sometimes all you got to really do is just keep it simple. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. It, 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 it's like when I watch your fight. If something happened in the first round, and I says, J-Rock is going to outclass him. You were in the opposite. It was to your left. It was in the corner to your left. And, uh-huh. and I was sitting next to Blue Blood Sports TV, and, and I said, he's going to outclass him tonight. It was just something that made J-Rock do a 360. I mean, j Heard do a 360 in the corner. And I says, Holy shit! It's different levels to this boxing game, mm-hmm. and and all you mm-hmm. had to do was keep your stamina, and obviously he had the stamina, and he won by UD, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, y'all did an extraordinary job, though, man. A lot of people keep talking about all oh, her got to do is use his reach and use his jab, but I'm not gonna comment too much. Like I didn't comment too much on the game plan before, mm-hmm. but I will say this: I will say this, Fred. He wasn't allowed to do those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think he didn't want to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You really think he didn't want to hit Julian with a jab? There were certain things he wasn't allowed to do. You know sure. what I mean? It, it, it's true. So you know the the the, the, the Sunday morning coaches, I like to call them. They can never be wrong. Mm-hmm. All he got to do is just use his reach. Let me just tell you something. Julian don't have short arms. Mm-hmm. Julian ain't five. Ain't no five six from the Julian middleweight. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, all that stuff about all you gotta do is just use a jab is not that simple, man. Mm-hmm. A jab is not always based on reach, man. Mm-hmm. People don't realize that. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of times, a shorter man can out jab a taller man if you do certain things. Mm-hmm. One of the best jabs I ever seen was a fighter by the name of the White Muhammad Kwali. Kwali. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? Dude was five seven and for the light heavyweight cruiserweight and heavyweight. Mm-hmm. So when people say that, I just I just remain humble and we'll you know what I just say like I said before we're gonna see we'll mm-hmm. see. You know what I mean? But back to Earl. Earl fought a great fight against Mikey, man. That jab and the half a step back, that wasn't no joke. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I don't think he would do that to Julian because it's a different height and range factor. Mm-hmm. But he fought the fight that he needed to to win. And he, didn't, and, and he beat Mikey every round. That was every, a round. every round. You don't, you don't usually see a top five pound for pound fight. I don't care what they say the weight was. How about this? Mikey Garcia was a champion of 140 pounds. Yeah. He's the one asked for the fight. So all of the stuff about he moved up two weight divisions, it was actually false. He came back, he was a junior welterweight. Yeah. Then he moved down to 135 for one fight. That was the Robert Easter fight. Robert Easter fight. He fought Sergio so, Wittenitz, yeah. Yeah, and guess what? Robert Easter's height didn't bother him because mm-hmm. it was a different level of skill being uh, being um, applied. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to be honest, Robert Easter's taller and got more reach than Earl. Probably right. You're right. Probably right. Well, look, look, look at them. Look at their box right. Yeah. Robert East is about 5'11". And yeah, he's, he's, definitely he's definitely taller. He's definitely, yeah, he's definitely taller. Yeah. Earl oh, oh, only about 5'9 and a half. Mm-hmm. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just size. Size mattered, but it wasn't just size. It was it was the way they had a great game plan, man. Mm-hmm. They really did. That was what you call a simple game plan, and, and, they, and, and Garcia just never adjusted. Mm-hmm. 